Well, welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use your TI Inspire calculator to find the regression equation for a table when we're trying to find the um, equation for a polynomial. And if they give us a table of numbers, now the first step is to always figure out what the degree of the polynomial is. So in a minute, we're, I'm going to show you how to do uh, this previous example that we did here in the previous video. I'm going to show you how to do that on your calculator uh, to figure out what equation would give us those seven octahedral numbers. But as far as how we do that on our calculator, we're going to follow these steps. So the first step is we're going to put that data into a spreadsheet on our TI Inspire. Now there's a couple of different methods that we could do. I'm, this is the method that I prefer that I'm going to show you and I'll also show you another method here in a minute when we get to our calculators. Um, but what you're going to do is you're going to highlight both columns. The way that you do that is you hit the up arrow until you get um, all the way up to the top of your column and then hit it again and it's going to select that entire column. And then if you hit the shift key and then left or right to select the other column, it'll select both columns. And once you have both columns selected, you're going to do this. You're going to go to the menu button, under statistics, choose stat calculation, and then depending on what the degree of the polynomial is, you're going to select one of these four for your regression. Now if it's a degree of one, that means it's linear. Now you're going to see in a minute that there's two options for your linear, MX plus B and a different version. You want to make sure that we choose or select the MX plus B form for our linear equation. And then you could, if it's a degree of two, it's a quadratic. Remember, if it's a degree of three, it would be cubic. And if it's a degree of four, it's going to be a quartic. So let's look how we would use those steps to find the equation that would give us the octahedral numbers. So our first step is to put these numbers into our calculator. Now, so then that way, we, so we can see everything. I'm not going to put all the numbers in. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the first five numbers in, so you could do the same. So our values for x are going to be the first term, the second term, the third term, the fourth term, the fifth term. That's where we get those numbers, if you're wondering where they came from. So our first term for our octahedral numbers is 1. Our second term for our octahedral numbers is 6. Our third is 19, and so on, so 44 and 85. If you want to put all the numbers that we have on the um, example there, if you want to put all those numbers in, you can. But just so we can see them all on the screen in one shot here, that's why I just have the first five terms. And it doesn't, it's not going to affect our answer. Now, using those directions I just gave you, what you can do is once you have that last number entered in, arrow, to, arrow up until you get all the way to the top, and then arrow up one more time, and it selects that entire column. Now, if over here on your calculator, if you hit the shift button and then the left arrow button, it'll select both columns. And now we're going to do menu. Under statistics, we want stat calculations. And now we're going to pick one of these. Now remember, this was a third degree polynomial, so we're going to do a cubic regression. Now remember, let's look at the other ones here. This is for if it's a linear regression. Remember, we have these two different ones to choose from, so we want to use mx plus b. Um, if it was a quadratic, quadratic, if it was a degree of 2, we would choose this one. If it was a quartic, we would choose this one. But again, it's a cubic because it's a third degree polynomial. Now this screen comes up. Just go ahead and hit Enter or hit OK. Now, they're not going to give you this specific equation. What they're going to do is they're going to give us... Um, well, first off, if I go down here, that's going to tell us the form it's in. Now, this doesn't look like much, so, but if you go to the, if you actually move your cursor to that cell down here in the gray, it'll show you what form it's going to be in. So it's in that form, ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. Now, I'm just going to arrow down so we can see everything here. Here they give us the actual equation, or the values for a, b, c, and d, I should say. Now, a is 0.666 repeating, or we're just going to say 0.67. Our value for b, now I don't know why they do this, 9.9 .9 times 10 to the negative 12 is essentially 0, because if I move the decimal place to the left 12 places, that's the same as 0. So it's going to be 0 0.6, 0 0.67 is our value for a, so that's going to be 0.67x cubed. I'll write it out here in a second. Our value for b is going to be 0. Our value for c is 0.3 repeating. And our value for D, again, that's essentially 0. 1.8 times 10 to the negative 11 means if I move the decimal places to the 11 places to the left, essentially, like I said, you get 0. So let me write out here in our notes how we'd get what our answer would be. 
So our answer would be point, we would say y equals 0.67x cubed. Now if you want to put 0x squared, you can, or we can just leave that blank, uh, plus 0.3x, um, and then again, our constant term was 0. So this would be our equation, it's in the form... It's in the form y equals ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. Again, our calculator gave us that the value for a is uh, 0.67 or 0.6 repeating. Our value for b was essentially 0, so we don't need to include that. Our value for c was 0.3, so it would be 0.3x. And our value for d, again, was pretty much 0. So that would be your answer. That's how we come up with your equation. Okay, well, I want to show you one more way that you can do this on your calculator. Um, so let's go back to, oops, let's go back to your calculator. So now let's say if instead of doing it using this technique, let's say if we wanted to create a spread or a scatter plot. So what you can do is you can go to the home button. Now next to your spreadsheet, we have this histogram. If you click on that, this is not a scatter plot. We have to organize the data first. What you're going to do is you're going to hit the tab button. This screen comes up, and we want it to, right now it's on the x-axis here, so we want to choose our x's down there. Hit the tab button again, it asks what do we want on our y-axis over here on the left. So we're going to pick our y values over there. So now we can see this would be what the, those coordinates would look like if we had graphed them. Now we want to come up with a re regression equation, so if we go to Menu, Analyze, Regression, and again we want to show cubic. Now, the only problem with this is there's times where you can't see the entire equation. That's why sometimes I prefer that other method better. Um, so you just have to know that to move this equation over so we can see the whole thing, move your cursor over so it looks like a hand over the um, equation. And then if you do Control and then click on that center button, it'll grab it. And now you can move it around so we can see the whole equation. So we can see that your equation would be point. 6, 7, x cubed. The way that's written, that's essentially 0, x squared, plus 0.33 x, plus essentially 0. So that just requires you to know how to move your equation around, but that's one of the reasons why I don't like that method, uh, just because some people have a hard time seeing or reading the equation. But it doesn't matter to me which method you use, as long as you are familiar with one of those methods to be able to come up with your regression equation. So that's it. So with that, good luck now as you work on those types of problems in your assignment.